Hi everybody, this video is looking at how carbon dioxide is transported around the body. So respiring tissue of course is going to be doing respiration and that respiration is going to be releasing carbon dioxide. And a small amount of that carbon dioxide is actually going to be transported in solution, actually dissolved in the blood plasma itself. The majority of the carbon dioxide though is going to diffuse into the red blood cell. Once the carbon dioxide is in the red blood cell, several things happen. So one of the things that happen is that it will react with water and that will form something called carbonic acid. An enzyme called carbonic anhydrase catalyzes that reaction. So there's our carbonic acid. Um, the carbonic acid will immediately dissociate into hydrogen carbon ions and protons or hydrogen ions. And those hydrogen carbon ions diffuse out of the red blood cell into the blood, blood, into the blood plasma. So here you can see those hydrogen carbon ions and some of the carbon dioxide that was produced by respiration uh, is transported around the body um, in the form of hydrogen carbon ions. Now, of course, when this happens, hydrogen carbon ions have a negative charge. So by diffusing out of the cell, the overall charge of the red blood cell is going to change. And that is not, uh, that, that can't happen. So to compensate for the loss of hydrogen carbon ions, what happens is that chloride ions diffuse into the cell. And both of these processes happen through the same uh, transport protein. So it's called an anion exchanger. The movement of the chloride ions in to the red blood cell is called the chloride shift. And that means that the overall charge in the red blood cell does not change. So we've still got some hydrogen ions in the red blood cell, and we'll come to those in a minute. We've also, of course, got haemoglobin in the red blood cell, you know, thousands of molecules of haemoglobin. And some of the carbon dioxide that enters the red blood cell combines with the haemoglobin. And it combines with the amino part of the proteins and it forms something called carbaminohemoglobin. The reaction also produces more hydrogen ions. So that carbon dioxide uh, which has joined with the haemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin, carb that's the third way that some of the carbon dioxide produced from respiration is transported. It's transported as that molecule. We've also got some haemoglobin which is already bound with oxygen as oxy, uh, oxyhemoglobin. So the hydrogen ions that were produced from the production of carbaminohemoglobin and the hydrogen ions that were produced when the carbonic acid dissociated, both of those combine with the oxyhemoglobin. And when that happens, it forms something called uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobinic acid, and that process causes a change in the shape of the molecule, and therefore the oxygen is released. The oxygen that's released is therefore able to diffuse out of the red blood cell into the blood plasma, and then it is able to fuse into the respiring tissue which is where it's needed for the respiration, uh, for the aerobic respiration. So what you see there is a couple of things happening. Firstly, the haemoglobin is acting as a buffer by combining with the hydrogen ions that have been produced and preventing a change in the pH of the blood. The second thing you can see is that those hydrogen ions which have been produced as a, an ultimate result of the carbon dioxide that's been released from the respiring tissue. They are responsible for causing oxygen to be released from oxyhemoglobin. So if we think back to a previous video where we looked at the Bohr effect and we saw that when you have an increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the respiring tissues, that causes oxygen to dissociate more readily from haemoglobin and this is why. Oxygen which is combined with haemoglobin is going to dissociate anyway when the oxygen concentration decreases but the presence as we just saw there of those hydrogen ions makes that happen even more. So what we've got here then 
are three different ways that oxygen can be, can, can be transported. Only 5% is transported as carbon dioxide in solution in the blood plasma. About 10% is transported as carbon aminohemoglobin. And about 85% is transported as hydrogen, hydrogen carbonate ions in the blood plasma. Okay, that's all. Thank you.